So I have a question for you. What's the best way to 3D print handles so that they don't accidentally break when you bump them into something. And recently I saw a huge debate online about this with tons of suggestions, everything from printing it with more walls to more infill to printing it solid, to splitting it in half, to printing it at an angle or even printing it hollow and inserting something inside of it. Well, I figured why don't we test out all of these and see which of them is worthy and which is. And clearly we're gonna need a 3D printable Thor hammer that we can test this out with. And thankfully I found this great file by Empathy that is actually a remix of the original file by Chaos Cortex that was a design that they created back all the way in 2016. And it is a fantastic model. And the files for the hammers come in multiple parts and are very easy to print. However, the handle is already pre hollowed out, but we need this to be solid so that we can test out printing this with different infill patterns and percentages. So to make this solid, I'm gonna add a cylinder primitive shape and then align that to our handle. Next, I want to further simplify this to help reduce some of the overhangs and thankfully an Elgu slicer, just like we have an Orca slicer, there's a function called make overhang printable, which is one of my favorite features in these slicers. So I'm going to add a modifier to the handles here that is going to enable me to selectively add where this modifier is placed in. It's going to help modify the geometry of the handles to help reduce the need for supports in certain areas. Then it's just a matter of getting all of these handles printed, which I'm going to be using over on my Elegoo Centauri Carbon, which just so happens that Elegoo is the sponsor of today's video. Not only is the Centauri Carbon incredibly affordable, but it also prints ridiculously fast and their print results look so good for this project. But the real star of the show isn't even the handles, it's the main body of the hammer. Look how incredible this looks in Elegoo's Sparkle PLA. This has the perfect amount of of glitter and glint to this overall print. And if you haven't already heard, Elgu launched nextprint.com where they're gonna pay you for your 3D models. That's right, if you upload your 3D models to nextprint.com, they're gonna pay you cold hard cash. For more information about any of Elgu's products or nextprint.com, you'll find links to those down below. And after getting all of the handles printed, I've basically broken them up into two different categories that we're gonna be testing. The first is the vertical print category here, where these are just basically gonna vary between the number of walls walls and infill percentage. Then the second is going to be the specialty category, which is where these might have printed in different orientations or split in half or hollowed out. And what's really crazy is just how much different some of these feel because of the different infill percentages and the walls. This one here is the 8% infill with two walls, feels so much lighter than the 100% infilled printed version. It's just a drastic difference in weight. And the other factor in all of this is the overall appearance because the one that printed vertically definitely has a lot more print deviations in where all those supports were connecting to help support this print as it was printing. So that means there's gonna be more cleanup involved. And speaking of cleanup, the prints that were printed in half definitely are gonna require a good bit more cleanup and sanding and smoothing just because of how the layers built up over time from the bottom up, as well as where those seams are, where it ended up connecting. And speaking of those connection points, I just used 3D Gloop to gloop these two parts together and then let it sit for a full 24 hours before we're gonna run these tests. And when it comes to which material you should be printing in to get more durable results, I ended up printing all these in PLA, which is the weakest out of all the available options. And I did that on purpose because I knew if we could find a great option using PLA, you can carry that over into using this with PET or ASA or some carbon fiber blend to get even stronger results. And since these handles are broken up into two parts, this connection area is always going to be the weakest point regardless of how we've printed them. So what I'm going to end up doing is focusing on our tests on this longer bit of our handle. And as a lot of you know, I'm very scientific with a lot of my testing. So we're gonna be using, I don't know, these bricks that I found in the backyard to rest the prints on. And then we're gonna be dropping some 10 pound weights on it. First up is my basic print settings with two walls, 8% infill and adapt a cubic infill type. And we're just gonna rest this here in the center. It's nicely seated between these two. Gently drop this down on it. <laughs> As expected, that snapped right in half. Let's try out, just for the heck of it, let's try out the smaller handle. Yeah, that also <laughs> just split right in half.
For the next test, we bumped up the walls to three and the infill percentage up to 20% and then changed the infill type to triangles for a more durable result. Three walls, 20% infill. <laughs> I honestly thought that was gonna hold up a lot better than it did. And what if we bump that up to five walls with 20% triangle infill? I just wanted to see if I just set the weight on it and let it kind of balance, I'm not really holding, it's, it's gonna hold that just fine. So let's see what the impact does here of dropping this. <laughs> I really thought this was gonna hold up to that weight, but it, it snapped just like the others. This is definitely more durable and a good bit chunkier than all of the other prints. Now, what about 100% infill? This is the heaviest of all of the prints and it also took the longest to print out of all of them. 100% infill test. Oh. Wow, that actually worked. Wow, oh my goodness. All right, you can see where I dropped the weight on it and I tried it a few times and this is holding up really good. Uh, yeah, this might be the winner so far. Well, at least it's the winner out of this category of printing it vertically using just infill options. And speaking of printing it vertically, I saw a lot of comments saying you should print it at an angle and it'll be much more durable. So we're gonna test that out. I'm not really confident on this, but we'll see. And here's our angled print. Oh, that actually wasn't bad. Oh my gosh. All right, one more drop here. All right, there we go. Printing it at an angle definitely was a good bit stronger. Like it still ended up breaking. It took two drops from the weight for this to break, but the first attempt actually held it. And what's really cool to see with this is because it was printed at an angle, you'll see the uh, print itself actually structurally held up a good bit better than all of our other tests that were just printed vertically, where they've all almost split right on the seam line of where it printed. And since printing it at an angle worked fairly well, well, how about if we cut it in half and print it completely flat and then glue them together? Again, these parts were 3D glued together and we'll see how they hold up. Also, I'm not 100% sure what the best angle would be to play this set. So I'm gonna place it flat where the seam is on the sides here and test it. And if it holds up, then we'll try it with the seam up. All right, here is the split in half prints. Ooh. All right, so that definitely cracked as we dropped it on the back side, but it held up much better than some of the other prints. Looks like I have some nunchucks here. This again is a viable option. This took two drops for it to fully break. The first time it did crack, but did not fully break. But again, is much stronger than what we were seeing with printing it vertically. And this was, I think, two walls and only 10% infill. So it's still, you know, very similar to what I had originally printed, but just split in half is gonna add a lot more structure to it. The downside is you're gonna have to deal with the seam line and cleaning that up and the mess of gluing your parts together. And our final test is gonna be with the completely hollow print that we can then insert a tube inside of. This is a PVC pipe that fits perfectly inside this handle. Personally, I love how this feels as well. All right, and here's the hollow print with the PVC pipe inside. Oh, ho, 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 nice. Let's try that again, but a little bit higher. Oh, that's really good. And check that out. This has two nice dents in it and still held up really well just using this PVC pipe. Now I'm sure there was an infinite number of different print combinations that I could have shown off to test these prints in, but this was just a handful of scenarios that I wanted to run through to see which might be the best option. So let me know in the comments which you think is even something that I haven't covered here that you think would work even better. But I was still impressed with how well that printed, printing those at an angle. The downside again is that you're gonna have more cleanup depending on the overhangs 
and where supports are connecting for those prints. Putting it split in half was also a viable option, but again, the cleanup might not be worth the hassle of everything. But when it comes to the two that I was most impressed with, I honestly was really surprised that the 100% infill held up. It was super heavy and chunky, and that's the one that I'm going for on my hammer build just because it gives it some extra weight. But I think the one that's gonna be the most durable is the one that we've inserted the PVC pipe inside of. Not only is this gonna print relatively quickly, but it's also really durable and the print results on the exterior look just as good as any of the others that we printed that didn't have all of those extra supports on. The only downside that I could see to this is that it doesn't have the heft that we have with the 100% infill, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't use the further inside opening of the PVC pipe to try and fill that in with sand or BBs or something else. And thanks again to all of my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos just like this one here. This was such a fun project to run off and print and get tested out, and hopefully it helps some of you out there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. I'm seriously loving the heft.